sound test room. Hello everybody, welcome to the sound test room where today we're going to take a look at the Stag BC300 FL bass, uh, which is a uh, super cheap budget bass, fretless. Okay, so um, I looked around um, different things. I really wanted um, that fretless sound, you know. Disclaimer, I am not, I am not a bass player. My first instrument is not bass, uh, but I just wanted the... fretless sound you know yeah um for anyone who's interested it's running through a irig pro into an ipad uh, into amplitude and it's using the, uh, an ampeg bass amp simulator as a gate on it at the moment um so a little bit about the bass okay so the bass was super cheap super cheap because i didn't want to spend a lot of money on a bass guitar been not being a bass player but i wanted that fretless sound has position markers along the top, but I, I was keen to get one without any fret markers because I thought, well, it will at least improve my bass playing. Um, it's a fusion bass, so it has a um, jazz style pickup and the precision pickups. Um, and you can blend, let's see, just this, turn the volume down for this. Uh, so this is the jazz pickup and tone. Sounds nice. And then we'll take the jazz pickup down and this one up. So this is the precision. So, of course, the thing with a fretless, the most important thing, um, I suppose, is as long as it tunes up. Well, as long as your strings tune up, and they do, they, uh, they tune up very well, and they stay in tune. Uh, so that's good. Um, would I take it on a gig? Uh, yeah, for one or two songs, maybe. I wouldn't want to use it for a whole gig. Um, it's very light. It's very comfortable. Um, the pots are nice and positive. They have a really nice positive feel. And Some people said that it felt like it was going to fall to bits when they picked it up. Uh, I don't. I didn't get that at all. Um, it feels very nice to me. Also, some people said it was quite noisy. I haven't opened this yet, or but you can stop any noise by shielding the inside. But you know, for me, that would be completely unnecessary because I could fix everything um, with the EQ if I if it was noisy. But it's not been too bad. It's been okay. Might hear a tiny bit there. I mean, if I bounce the treble up, of course. But that's probably more from the amp than, than not. Um, what else? Let's see. The action, I haven't adjusted anything on this bass, by the way. Neither. Nothing at all. So the action is... I don't know if you can see. The action is pretty good. But again, you could adjust the action. Um, it feels... It feels quite good quality. It was incredibly cheap. It was £110, so it was $150 uh, from Amazon. And the main thing is, you know, like I said, the, the difficult thing was that they're not easy. They're not easy to play at all. Um, the, 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 the thing is, you know, you, you're, once it tunes up, that's the most important thing, because your four strings are tuned up. After that, it's down to you. So you have to have an incredibly good ear. So say, for instance, we play this A, and we'll play this octave. You can, you have to be right on the money. Okay, so now that's down to your playing, not the bass. The position markers help. Also remembering with uh, fretless uh, bass is that where the fret would be is where you your finger wants to be so for instance this little marker here which is the third fret you need to be right on that fret and that gives you a good guideline you know we know that's c and we'll know that that's c so that's pretty close uh, you can start to practice all the famous stuff like i've like I, i've been playing around with um uh, i was playing walk on the wild side a bit like i said it's hard because it's down to tonality, and it's a completely different thing, and it's not easy to play. 
but if you wanted to, it's C. C, C there, and it's C10, but it's a fifth, really. And I think Herbie Flowers did it actually different than that. I think he went to... Uh, and then it was with the... Uh, he went down. But anyway, neither of the The other one was the Paul Young one. See, it's really hard to get it right. But once you get it right... You can start practicing all that kind of stuff. But like I said, the main thing is that once it's tuned and it tunes well... That it's it's great, you know. After that, it's down to you, you know. And like I said, I'm not, you know, I'm still practicing. I got it, so basically make myself better. I always think fretless is sound nice with a bit of chorus, so I'll put a chorus in. You get that <laughs> Sustain. And I definitely found as well also that I like the volumes full up and the tone full on for both pickups. I think that gives it a nice rich, nice rich sound. And you can do all that cool fretless stuff then. It sounds nice. I'm going to try it with um, another um, setting here. So I've uh, that was the amplitude one. I'm going to try it with um, an app called Tone Stack. I have a bass setting. So you can hear a bit more noise here because I have certain settings on the amp. So we can probably kill some of that. Let me just switch that amp off. That's made an improvement straight away. We can probably... Lose a bit on EQ. Now let's try that with the chorus as well. I may want to make some adjustments to the bass. Switch the chorus off. Try it with a flanger. Now, at this point, you should listen through headphones because this is a really nice stereo flange. So, there you go, guys. The Stag BC300 fretless bass, fretless fusion bass. Um, very, very nice, very cheap. Uh, super, super reasonable price. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, like the video if you do. And uh, subscribe to the channel. Visit us at thesoundtestroom.com. All right, guys, I'll see you later.